Hey folks, what's up? Welcome back for another episode of Bombshell But Oh, hey, what is that? Ah, oh, this looks like fun. All right, for real though, the real reason for this video is, and uh, to kind of explain why I haven't shot any bike stuff lately, I got distracted uh, a few months ago. A friend of mine and I were chatting at work and he's like, hey, so I have this Geo Metro, I don't know what to do with it. And I was like, wait, you have a Geo? He's like, yeah, you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah. So look what I got. I got a Geo Metro. It's a 94. It's not the prettiest, but at the time it was running and driving. It's got 227,000 miles on the clock and um, had some issues. Didn't run real great. Uh, kind of stumbled around. A friend of mine borrowed it for a while. That's the guy behind the camera, by the way. And, uh, you know, he's like, hey, bro, this thing runs like crap. Um, I have a hard time even getting to 55. And I was like, all right, well, let's take a look at it. So I messed around with it for a while, and I came to the conclusion that, you know what, this throttle body, single injector, fuel injection crap has got to go. So uh, let me show you what we got in store for this thing. So here's all the pieces, parts, for the most part. There's a few extra things. But anyways, this is all the stuff that's going to go into uh, doing what I want here. Wait, what is, what is that? Oh my gosh, is that it? No, you're not going to put a turbo on a Geo Metro, are you? <laughs> of course I am. Um, so if, you have, if you've watched any of my bike videos, this may look familiar. Uh, this is actually the turbo that was going to go on the XS750. I bought a duplicate one. This one, unfortunately, sitting inside the car out here, uh, the car leaks a little bit, and so just the moisture made it, made it rust up a little bit. But didn't hurt the insides, just the outside. So whatever, we'll get back to that. Anyway, uh, so the... The glorious Suzuki G10 th uh, three-cylinder has already been removed. Um, I pulled it out, and the block is at the machine shop. Um, thing had 227,000 miles on it, and the bearings looked damn near brand new. A little bit of wear in the cylinder bores, so we're getting that board over uh, 20 over. Uh, if you know anything about Geo Metros, this was an XFI, which means it had the uh, more fuel economy preferred cam in it and also had only two piston rings per cylinder so because fuel image or fuel economy is secondary goal on this car I'm going to go ahead and go with the standard uh, three ring pistons that were in the LSI and the other models whichever I don't know that much about them whatever so I ordered some standard three ring pistons in a 20 uh, 20 thousandths or half millimeter over so as soon as those come in I'll take them to the machine shop get the block final board but anyway so most of this wiring spaghetti is going to go away um from what I can tell, looking at the wiring diagrams, the factory ECU doesn't really tie into much of anything. Uh, in fact, even the speedometer is mechanical. So there's the drive for that. So I don't have to worry about dealing with any of that stuff. I'll probably just abandon the dang thing in place, rip out most of this wiring, uh, use this pass through here to build, pass my new wire harness through for the ECU. Uh, in case you didn't catch on, I'm using a, another Speedduino. So uh, for my last video where I talked about uh, doing fuel injection conversion on motorcycles. I'm doing the same thing here. Um, and this is also going to be my test bed to prove out uh, whether or not a optical crank position sensor will work. So I've made this. Um, long story behind why it's made out of four pieces and not just one solid piece, but don't worry about that. Anyways, um, so this is the stock uh, crank pulley. There was no balancer in this. There was no rubber or anything. It's just a solid piece of cast iron. It used to have a an extra set of ribs on there for an AC pulley. This car never had AC, it's not gonna have AC. So I just machined that off, uh, machined this on the CNC and then just bolted it on. Uh, I kept a symmetrical bolt, bolt pattern to hopefully not intro introduce any uh, out of balance characteristics. There were some balance holes drilled in this uh, pulley. You can kind of see them sticking out there. I went ahead and left those and uh, tried not to alter the weight too much on this thing. So quick rundown of the stuff we're gonna run here. So that is a factory cylinder head, uh, slightly modified. Uh, originally, this car had uh, a single fuel injector in the throttle body. It was a throttle body fuel injection, which GM was kind of playing with back in the 90s. But when I got ready to start, so I designed this intake manifold over here, and my original CAD designs had injector ports um, welded down here with the injectors kind of facing here. And I didn't like how far away they were from the valves, but it was what I could deal with. In the process of disassembling the motor, I noticed that there were cast in injector bosses in the head that were just not drilled out. Um, you can kind of see them down inside the port there that was already it was already kind of part of the casting. Uh, the lighting out here is terrible, I'm sorry. Anyways, so I made this weird angle plate that it's currently sitting on uh, to keep it at a nice 45 degrees on the mill 
so that I could come in and bore out these. Anyway, sorry about that. Anyway, so now I can just run uh, these injectors, which these are just some junkyard injectors out of like a Toyota Camry, I think. Um, so those will sit in there. I've got new seals for them. Uh, I've already made the uh, fuel rail. Same way I did the other one. These just have a smaller O-ring, so I did a smaller hole in these, and then I threaded the ends for some uh, 8 ORB to dash 6 uh, JIC or AN fittings. So I'm going to be completely redoing the fuel system from the tank all the way forward. I'm going to put an end tank, um, probably just like a 255 Walbro style pump in the tank. Um, and then we'll obviously come here with a return style regulator because the stock fuel pressure on this car was only like 12 or 15 PSI, I think. Something ridiculously low. But anyways, so we're going to run that. Um, this is going to the machine shop. Hopefully, um, same time when I get the pistons, I'll drop that off. Going to get bronze valve guides put in it. I've got brand new valves, so I'll go ahead and have a valve job, get it all done. So at least I know I'm starting with a good platform. Uh, talked about the intake manifold a little bit. Nothing special here. Uh, I took an intake manifold gasket that I bought and traced it out in the Infusion 360 and cut that flange. And that's just some inch and a quarter Schedule 40 pipe um, and a piece of, uh, I, think, I think that's two and a half or three inch... Yeah, it's two, three inch tube uh, with a 120 wall, and then the flange just made, I made the flange to match the throttle body, which I'll talk about in a minute when I get to that. You may notice there's a giant hole in the bottom. Um, I'm making a plate that's going to weld in here that'll have about four or five uh, threaded uh, NPT fittings, so I can run, you know, one for the brake booster, um, you know, boost reference for blow, blow off valve, wastegate, things like that. Um, and then I'll talk to you in a minute. I've also got a plan. There's going to be a port that comes off of here, hopefully for idle control. I've got an idea for that. I haven't tested it yet, but like I said, this car is kind of a test bed for me to try out um, sensors and um, ideas before I try and integrate them on bikes with like expensive parts. Most of you, you'll notice most of the parts in this build are going to be eBay type stuff or junkyard stuff. Um, so to go along with the fuel system, kind of mentioned it before, so I've got 20 feet of some dash six fuel line from eBay um, and a, you know, super junky return style regulator and like 40 bucks or something with all the fittings. So I've got that. I've got a whole box of fittings too, to go um, to the fuel rail in case these aren't everything I need. So we'll get the fuel system plumbed up. Um, I made a man, just a standard log style manifold, you know, like the cheapest way you can build a turbo manifold. I did the same thing for this, uh, flanges I did for the intake, just copied the gasket, uh, except this one I cut with a uh, plasma cutter, um, the CNC plasma cutter to make these flanges on here and then welded everything up um, and then just faced everything off with a fly cutter. So hopefully that should work. I've already checked out the mounting. Before I took the engine out, I mounted this up to the engine and made sure the turbo sits where I want it. It actually goes, it actually sits like this on the head. So the turbo is going to be top front. Um, and then I've got some intercooler piping, just a cheap eBay intercooler piping kit. It's all two inch because this is a tiny motor. Um, and I've got an old uh, Toyota MR2 intercooler out of like, I think it was a 92. A friend of mine rebuilt and left this in my garage years ago and I've been just hauling it around from move to move and finally found a use for it. Probably have to cut all the pipes off and just use the core, but whatever, I've got it. Uh, this might look familiar to some of you um, from my last video. This is one of my um, through hole uh, Speedwino boards using the, uh, uh, mm-hmm. Mega 2560 Pro uh, Arduino platform device there. Uh, I've already got the Bluetooth on this. I went ahead and pulled out the VR regulator, or I didn't add the VR regulator on this one, because I'm or VR sensor converter, because I'm not using any variable reluctance sensors on this one. Also removed the uh, onboard map sensor, or just didn't install an onboard map sensor on this one, because I'm not using that. I've got just a generic GM three bar map sensor. Uh, mount this on the firewall and run a hose to it. So there's that. Uh, another thing, new thing I'm using, uh, I'm testing out on this uh, platform is this uh, wideband oxygen sensor adapter or board. Anyways, uh, this is the, unfortunately, it's, you can't really see inside the case there. Uh, this is the Spartan OEM from 14.7.com, I believe. And I uh, just got a pretty standard generic um, Bosch oxygen or wideband oxygen sensor 
Uh, actually, that's not even a Bosch. It's an even cheaper off-brand, whatever. Um, so we'll test this out, and then this will just give me a 0 to 5 volt uh, linear output that I can run into the ECU uh, so we can tune off of that. Um, so because I wanted to run sequential injection and I'm going coil on plug uh, ignition on this one, I wanted a cam position sensor. So this uh, used to be the distributor for the stock engine. Uh, it's driven directly off the camshaft. Um, so what I did is I obviously took the cap off and then I machined this uh, riser plate and then I machined down the shaft, cut a flat on it, and then that piece of aluminum in there, uh, you can see kind of in the picture, has a, a single neodymium magnet on it. Um, I'm not sure if the neodymium is going to hold up to the heat. I don't know how hot this piece will get. It's pretty removed from the engine, so it should probably be okay. And then inside there where the wires are going, there's a Hall effect sensor uh, epoxied into that piece of aluminum. And then it's a plate in there. So I can bolt this onto the engine. I can fine tune it if I need to, but I really won't need to mechanically adjust this because I can just adjust its position in the software if I need to, um, which I won't. And I just put a plexiglass cover so you can kind of see what's going on just for shits and giggles. So there's that part. Um, I mentioned the throttle body earlier, so I literally went to the junkyard uh, like 20 minutes before they closed one day, and I was running through the import section, just popping hoods, uh, looking for the simplest throttle body I could find. Um, this one does have coolant passages. I'm not going to use those. I may actually try and just carve this off for aesthetics. Um, not super worried about it, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't really matter. It's not connected to anything other than coolant. It has a coolant channel that runs through there. But this is off of the same, uh, I think it's like a 90 Toyota Camry, uh, same place I got the injectors from. Um, I went ahead and took the plugs for the injectors too, because it makes life a lot easier. But I picked this one because um, it has a vacuum port if I need it. So I could use this for the brake booster because it goes directly to the manifold side. Um, and it was reasonably sized. One of the smaller ones I could find actually, for, oddly enough, for a 3 liter V6. But um, So I'll have to use uh, an adapter coupler to step this up because this is 2.5 inch roughly. And the intercooler piping I'm running is 2 inch. But yeah, so... so this flange pattern matches up with that on the exhaust, on the intake manifold, so I just bolt that guy up. Nothing special there. Uh, picked up a super cheap blow-off valve, or yeah, blow-off valve. I actually bought a couple of them. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use. Um, I kind of like this one. It's designed to be a research style if you wanted to. That's why it's got a, a little flare on the outlet nipple there. But I've got flanges and stuff for this, so I can use either this one or this one back here, which I think is probably way too big. Um, Think about this one. It came with a spring that was so heavy that like no amount of vacuum would open this thing. Uh, I hooked up a vacuum pump, sucked it all the way down to like 29 inches of mercury, and it never even budged. So if I want to use this one, I have to find a lighter spring because right now it's pretty much useless. I don't know. My impression of whoever designed this thing is that they have no idea how a blow-off valve is actually supposed to work. Um, I mean, I guess if you had like 100 pounds of boost underneath and a little vacuum on top, it would release, but... Um, the spring in this was just insanely too heavy. So I probably won't use that one, but I brought it along anyway. So there's that. Um, and then I've got uh, just a piece of Dash 10 uh, and with a, the bung that fits on the turbo end. And then right here I've got the other end um, that'll get welded into the oil pan. Um, so this oil pan, I don't have it with me here. It's over uh, my other shop. Where the, where the rest of the engine parts are. Um, actually has like a little bit of a windage tray sort of built into the, kind of like a baffle plate, whatever, inside the oil pan. So I'll put this above it so that we don't have to worry about um, backing up oil feed to the turbo. But, uh, and I got, you know, a generic, super cheapy uh, catch can just to kind of help prevent this thing from blowing oil everywhere. Try to, you know, put this on the valve cover so I can suck some of the oil vapors out of it, keep a little bit of a crankcase vacuum. Um, generic fuel pump or fuel filter rather nothing special there just something to minimize how much trash ends up in my injectors and then that muffler yeah sweet and sexy uh, so I've got this uh, from a friend of mine he asked me to do some machine work for him just machine some parts and I did and a couple days later he had advertised this up for your sale on Craigslist or Facebook marketplace and I was like hey I was like instead of paying me for that machine work you just want to give me that muffler and he's like okay good deal for you good deal for me so that's going on the back of this. Um, probably have to end up trimming the bumper out a little bit, which doesn't bother me because this bumper is already a little bit mangled. I'm not really sure what happened. It looks like somebody backed over something and it stabbed it from underneath and um, got a little bit of body work to do. Um, the main focus right now is to get the engine back together, get the car running, and then I'm going to kind of try and teach myself body work on this car. It's got a lot of little dents and dings in it. And, you know, if I end up deciding that I like it and it's fun to drive, I might actually do some body work on it. For the most part, though, it's pretty straight. Um, I've already fixed a few things on the car. 
Uh, the driver's side window rolled down super crooked when you would try to roll the window down and the door handle was broken. So I put a new door handle on it, put two new mirrors on it. Um, from the factory, the XFIs only had a driver's side mirror, so I put one on the, on the passenger side as well. Uh, the guy I got it from had already put like damn near brand new tires on it. So I'll probably continue to run these tiny little guys for now. Um, these are literally a 12 inch rim. Uh, that's another thing about the XFIs. They had um, 12 inch rims to try to minimize how much weight. Also, the brake rotors are super tiny. Um, once again, if once it's up and running, I plan to upgrade uh, to some of the later model stuff so I can actually have a sway bar, put some bigger brakes on it and different wheels. Luckily, it's a four on, 100, four on 100 millimeter bolt pattern. So uh, wheels are, you know, should be easy enough to find for this thing. But anyways, so I think this is going to be a fun little project. I uh, hope you guys uh, stay tuned and keep coming back until this is done. And eh, I'm sorry, I really want to get back on the bike, but I this just seemed like way too much fun to pass up. And it gives me a chance to test out some stuff that I'll probably end up using on the bike. So I know my channel is called Bombshell Bikes, but that's why uh, this car is the reason I haven't done anything with the bikes lately. And her name is going to be Project Side Quest. Um, I thought that was pretty fitting because it's distracted me from my main quest of building bikes. But anyways, um, thanks for tuning in, folks. And uh, stay tuned as we get this thing built. Should be a lot of fun.